Well, there's one problem with that. That's all right. Now I'm starting to be recorded. Um, the problem was now I didn't have any retirement plan. I had this old pension and in reaching out to some people, uh, one of our lender friends, uh, David Dewar down in South Utah County, I don't remember if Courtney recommended him or anyway, somehow we connected. I met Patrick and Patrick's been in the business for 17 plus years. And he's like, yeah, we can definitely help you with the 401k rollover into an IRA. And, and that's kind of good. And we kind of got talking and then that's kind of all that happened till life happened. And I was, what do I want to do with my life? So me and Patrick got talking a few months back and I jumped in. Patrick, do you want to introduce yourself or do you want me to introduce you? Oh, you're doing great. Okay. We'll just keep you on the hot plate. Perfect. Um, so why did I go with Patrick? Why did I join Wealthwave? Why do I care about this big question we're going to get to? Um, I, can I make that bigger? There's probably a way to do that. I won't deal with that at the moment. Um, Share the screen with Guy, or with Guy or Zoom. Is it? That's as big as it'll go. That's as, okay. That's all right. And you can all see it, so we're good, right? Yeah. Everybody online can see it? Um, yeah. I've talked to some different financial advisors before. Some of them whining and dining me. Hey, you're in real estate. We can work with a deal with you. We can make this work. Um, talk to others and they're like, you need to get into a life insurance plan. I was like, great. What does that mean? I have one with work. Um, so this conversation is about one branch of wealth. Real estate, we deal with the other branches of wealth, buying, real, buying a home that we can live in, flipping it like Jamie has done before, and then using that equity to grow our wealth. With the financial services side that we deal with, we're talking about putting stuff away and then finding ways to, to correctly not avoid taxes, but take, pay less taxes. Because if we don't have a plan, when we get to the retirement stage, we'll either run out of money or two, the IRS will take everything else. So what's our big question? Why does it matter? Will you have enough? That's a question that every million, every million, every American will face at some point or another. Do I have enough? The answer to that, probably not. And that's sad. And that's why I, one of the reasons why I jumped into this is I wanted to help educate people rather than just here, buy a product or we'll wine and dine you so you'll use our product. This is all about education. Um, I brought Patrick here because of his experience and and some of the stories that he's had to show how education served others. Do you want to help? Sure. And hey, really quick, I have a question for you. How many of you have met a, a potential client who had a large piece of real estate to sell, but wouldn't do it because they were freaking out about capital gains? So, you, but you do know that you can sell real estate and avoid all capital gains, correct? So part of the work that we do is, you know, looking at this demographic, you know, retirees, I have a client right now that they're 80, they're looking to sell two properties in Spanish Fork, and, and their accountant says, well, you're going to have $120,000 in capital gains, one property they purchased for $45,000. So you can, they're in their 80s, you can probably imagine when that was, it's like 100 years ago. Could you buy, what was the last time you could buy a nice piece of property with a house, three bedroom for 45 grand? Um, the 70s, maybe. maybe. <laughs> okay. So, but they weren't aware of the fact that, you know, using a grant or trust or a CRUT, so to speak, and structuring things the right way, that they could avoid capital gains. But see, they don't want to necessarily go all back into real estate. You know, they're like tired of being a landlord. They just don't want to deal with it at this point. So we're actually structuring a kind of like a guaranteed income-based program for them with Nationwide, one of the companies we work with, where they can actually go, hey, 
I'm going to sell the property. I'm going to use my realtor. I'm going to use somebody like you. And then I'm going to bring the financial professional in that is going to work with my CPA and get everything structured so that we can move that property and avoid capital gains. And so part of what we do is work with people from all generations of life, whether they're a baby boomer, a Gen Xer. Do we have any baby boomers in here? This is kind of the don't raise your hand and admit that. This looks like a pretty young group. I think I'm probably like the oldest person in here. I, how old do you think I am? You're under 50. I am 50. So you, you win the prize. I want the prize. I don't know. We'll give you a book. <laughs> as long as you promise to read it. So, so the other thing that I, in 17 years, I run into a lot of people like, hey, can you help my client with their credit? Yes, we can do that. Can you help them build some reserves so that they can become a future buyer? Like I've met a gentleman who's uh, bought real estate, does really well. But he's like, I'm concerned about my kids. How do we get them saving and working? And I have somebody that I'm meeting with on Friday who has a large sum of money and he wants to do sort of the be your own bank where money can go in tax-free, grow and accumulate tax-free, come right out tax-free because he's going to buy two properties and he's going to build a a spec home on his property and he wants to rent that, but he doesn't want to deal with the bank. And so there are ways that you can creatively reach out, educate, bring in a professional to create more market share for yourselves and work with other people. And I see, see this as all part of, I guess, the sales process, if we want to call it that. But uh, uh, apart from that, a lot of people are thinking and concerned about some of these things. Um, credit card debt. We want to reduce stress for you for your clients for everyone because without financial literacy without knowing where to put our money when we are saving it for the long run it can cause problem it can cause poverty debt divorce i found this one interesting that 44 percent of americans don't have enough to cover a 400 dollars emergency so our friends from Elevate showed up a little late. Sorry. But home warranties, how much do they cost? Uh, $4,600. To $4,600. So for the first year after your clients buy a home, they're good. But what happens the month after that home warranty runs out? AC goes up. That $400 is now due, and they're like, do. And having, having had that experience for the AC run out, it's like, okay. Instead of going to the movies for the next five months with the kids and everybody else, I guess we're getting an AC unit because we'd like to have a cold house tomorrow. Nobody wants to work in our homes, go to movies with your family and kids anymore? That's true. You might be in there now. That makes crazy. It, not to be the bearer of bad news, but if we don't have enough money, it can be very difficult. It can be really challenging. And that's part of our goal here at Presidio is raising the bar, helping people see beyond their stress, their pain, their struggle to get to their next big thing, whether that's getting into their new home, being happy and safe in their new home, or being able to invest into the properties they need to, whether that's commercial or whether that's property management, right? So Wealthwave is the company that we work with. It's a branch of... Transamerica, that's the easier to remember big umbrella. And ours is based entirely off education. So we, we made a book. The book is awesome. But our mission is to stamp out financial illiteracy so families can enjoy a work optional lifestyle. So that when they have so much money, they can become their own bank. Fantastic. They're ready. They can do it with this limited fund going away to the IRS as possible, but also so that if you're just in the beginning and it's all confusing and scary and unknown, we can help get you on the right path and start wherever you're at. It doesn't have to be big and scary. They may not have taught it in high school, or even if they did, it went in one ear and out the other because we're worried about other things in high school. Here's an opportunity to relearn something that's super important to our future. Okay, so um, this book would have been great when I was in my 20s. Um, how many of you started saving and investing when you were in your 20s? 
Awesome. Since the time value of money is so important. And, you know, people are like, well, what about the market? Right? Is it overinflated? Everybody, the, there's always been a, a great economy. There's always been a bad economy. There'll always be, are we heading into a recession? Interest rates are going up. Okay, you know what? That's just an excuse to not take action and do something. And so I love the fact that we created this book. And what we do is we do seminars all over the country. We have a How Money Works class, which we do two sessions. People, It's free. Anyone can register. And we will we announce those. And what we do is we take people basically through the seven money milestones, which are laid out in this book. Everything from starting to accumulating wealth, protecting wealth, to estate planning and, and transitioning that wealth to the next generation. And so because there's such a lack of financial education, this is the number one book right now being, per, being circulated on personal finance. And I'll tell you that the, the financial services industry hasn't done much to really help people. Only 3% of the people out there that were surveyed are actually on track to retire financially independent. And so that's a challenge. And so we just created our own book. And this is a fantastic book. Now, how many of you have seen this? I mean, it's, I know it's circulating out there. Ho hopefully we'll give you all a copy. When you look at this, I know it looks like it was written for like teenagers, but it, there is kind of like, I guess, a grown up conversation going on in here. It's, 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 this is the best, but, but there, there are some incredible things in here. So if I, can you have it yeah. in like four days. I don't think it is on Audible, but we can check. Then the fourth chapter. Let me check. So, most people don't know beans about money. I like this page here. It says in 2018, a global survey asked over 100,000 people in 15 different countries three simple questions about money concepts, and 70% failed to answer all three basic questions correctly. Now, again, most people that are younger are probably not asking these questions. How much life insurance do you need? How much do you need to have saved for the future? Are you on track? How much will Social Security pay you each month? Who's fired up about getting a Social Security check? You're all like independent. Right? There's a trick question. Okay, I don't know. And if, they, if there is some left, maybe we won't be able to take it until we're 80 or 75. You know, if there's, they say, hey, people are living longer. So it will maybe create a reduced benefit and make you wait longer to take it. You can um, use the personal security check after you do the dishes after the luncheon. Me? Personally? Ready. Okay. <laughs> I like that. So basically, we're just taking a lifetime of guesswork out of the equation. So what we do is we sit down with people individually and we take them through engagement, discovery, I, I like our, our tools and our system because it's simple and easy. It's very creative, up to date. And we work with multiple companies doing multiple things, everything from emergency fund planning all the way to accumulation and income distribution. And you mentioned tax. We don't do tax uh, evasion. We're more of tax avoidance. There's a difference. One, you go to jail. The other one, you're the hero. I can teach you how to avoid the job. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll meet afterwards. Beautiful. Never had a fine, never been to jail. Don't plan on it. So thank you. All right. Part so of why, go ahead. Part of why I worked with Patrick and part of why I am grateful for that partnership is the strategy and the honesty. Because we're a brokerage, like we can look for the plan that's best for you or your client. Or and we were at a um uh, a group barbecue and mingle learn and one of our other colleagues he was talking about how when he first got into the business business he had gone to like a hundred different broker groups to figure out this financial service industry and he got to wealth wave and he found a product that was better for his client but we didn't have a contract for them and he called up his manager and he's like, hey, there's this better product for our client. This is why it's better. This is what's going on. And his boss is like, give me a minute. Called him back in 30 minutes and like, yep, you're right. That is a better product. The contract's being signed right now. Go ahead and give that product to your client. It's like, whoa, that's cool. Like, That's 
giving service, that's giving value, that's doing the right thing for your client. And that's what we are about, raising that bar. Anyway, the segue, one of the concepts, and I think it's the most important concept, pretty easy to follow and understand the rule of 72. And it talks about it in depth in the book, it takes about four pages it goes through. 72 divided by your interest rate equals the number of years it'll take for your money to double. So fun story, me and Patrick were talking about this the other day and we looked up a local bank, pretty common bank for Utah. And we looked at their current savings account, basic account, and their interest rate was 0.16. Yeah, 0.16. 0.16. So 72 divided by 0.16 is something in the range of like four or 500 years. I'm not going to be around at that point. So let's say I put $100 into this account. You have to put 50 in no matter what. That's going to take 500 years to turn into $200. Holy cow. That's not a that kind of word. They charge a $3 monthly fee for the account as well. So. Yeah, I was going to get there. <laughs> so they charge a $3 account or three dollars a month to hold that account so that they can offer the mobile checking all of the bells and whistles that the bank offers right we did some math that's 16.6667 months so 17 months your account's already depleted if you just put the initial amount in and don't put anything in and it's going to take 500 years to double somebody's winning that interest rate game that's not a knock on the bank. It's still better to put your money in the bank than in your mattress. But as I thought about that more and more, this is, this is the key to growing money as far as financial services go. If you learn anything from the class today, learn that interest rate is the key to growing money in, in your investments. Why is that? This is, this is the key to exponentializing money. If it's a one-to-one -one interest rate, it's gonna take about 72 years to grow. Uh, this just says it doesn't include the fees, the risks, everything else. If you buy a stock, it could drive, it could grow. So that could change how this works. But if you were to put in $10,000, so this is Zoe, she's one of the characters in the books, talks about, she inherited $10,000. She decided rather than being a 19 year old and going and blowing it on a car, she's a really smart girl. She's gonna invest it, but where does she invest it and how? Yeah. So using like the big example, she finds 1%. Oh no, it doubles not even once by the time she wants to retire when she's 72. But if she had an interest rate of like 9%, it doubles six times and now she's, knocking on the door of $650,000 by the time she wants to retire. She gets 12%, then it's eight doubles. She's well over the million dollar, sweet, I made it feeling. She's made it past that threshold. Now she's she can retire and go, okay, I can maintain my lifestyle. I like to think of this branch, maybe it's inaccurate, maybe it's totally accurate, whatever fits for you. I want to have my money from the work that I'm doing, from my other real estate investments, and have this growing on the side. So I'm working, but also have optional lifestyle. Um, we've talked about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you got in the industry, what were you doing, Patrick? I was a, should I confess? Mm -hmm. I, was a, I was a high school history teacher. <laughs> and Yeah. And there's a little bit of a difference between being a high school teacher and, and dealing with money. Correct. <laughs> this is, it's fun educating people when it comes to money. And I have been working with hundreds and hundreds of clients over the last 17 years. And to my knowledge, none of them have ever flipped me off. They said they include a little levity and then it's a little humor. But I have never experienced that with my financial clients. But I certainly have as a history teacher. I think I probably got flipped off a couple of times over subjects like homework and some other things like that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I so I just I changed one educational career for another. And it's so important that we show people what they're doing, why they're doing it. And kind of, you know, that idea begin with the why. Like, OK, you're saving, you're doing this. Why? 
You know, like people have money piled up in a 401k. Why? Is it enough? Are the tax breaks now going to outweigh the tax penalty later when both the principal and the interest is taxed at a future rate and you've lost deductions over the years, unless you have kids move back into your basement? But I don't think you can claim them. No, I don't. No. So I couldn't. So, <laughs> I claim my dog. But so it's, it's one thing to make that money. It's another thing to keep it. And how do we how do we work with risk? And so that's where we shine is helping people not only get those returns, but also to be able to keep it. And maybe we don't want to wait until we're 55, 65 or 70 to retire. Maybe we want to be financially independent sooner. And so there are multiple facets and ways to do that and to kind of introduce those things to you to the people that you're working with and also to look at that for yourself. We definitely want to have cash flow now and cash flow later. I liked this graph because it it alliterates how or back up. So there's this fun little quote. It's like, when's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. When's the second best time? Now. Yeah. Today. Right? This is the this goes right along with that. Now, if you're 60 and want to retire at 67, so in seven years, you're gonna have to put a lot of money down every month. And that might not be possible. It, at eighty six hundred dollars a month, besides living, that could be really heavy. But if you're 20, 30, 40, this is a lot more manageable. I like the example of twenty to sixty seven or thirty five to sixty seven. That I kind of fit in that category. I, I like to save money now at a few hundred dollars a month and have it then. But consider where you are. Maybe that's not realistic, or maybe it is. Maybe you don't need all of your eggs in one basket of a financial plan that works for you for the next 50 years, but maybe an additional little package that supplements what you're doing with your real estate business, what your spouse is doing with their career. Maybe they have some investments from that option. Whatever that is, whatever that picture looks like to you, what additional stream of income or financial security can you give yourself? That's where I like to think about this picture. Risk right. Money to work for you, yep. not against you. Absolutely. Exactly. And then when it's working for you, there's ways to have it be kind of behind the scenes. And that's part of that. And then we'll just talk about some milestones. So this is kind of the, the sort of the process that we'll take folks through. Um, again, it depends on their age, their circumstances, but I love doing this with people. And we just, we sit down and we just have a, a kind of an honest conversation about where, what's their level of financial education. Where do most people learn about money? Would you say? School of hard knocks. Yes. <laughs> By making mistakes along the way, right? Um so, you know, we talk about financial literacy and making sure that we understand. And I think the financial services industry in general is trying to overcomplicate things to the point where people kind of throw in the towel. This is too complicated. I don't understand this. And what they don't understand, they don't stick with. And so I meet a lot of people, you know, in their 30s that have cashed out 401ks and paid 10% penalty plus taxes and lost half their money. And there, there's a lot of frustration out there. And so number two, we want to make sure that we protect against loss of income, loss of savings, and making sure that we do that in the right area. So we do educate people about the different kinds of insurance. Uh, you know, people shop for their car insurance. You know, how many people have insurance on their phone? Anybody have phone insurance? You know, we insure our homes, our property, right? Um, but how do we insure our income? So we talk about how to insure your income. That's important too. That's your biggest asset is your ability to earn income. Would you agree? And so how do you ensure that and protect it? And that's part of that discussion. I won't go through all these, but we do do a lot of counseling and work with people on debt management, changing spending habits, striving to eliminate debt. Um, I met a gentleman the other day. He says, I finally, who's 52, he says, I paid off my house. My son's been telling me to call you. I finally paid off my house. I'm ready to sit down and visit. So I'm like, come on in. So he comes to the office. We'd go through sort of a financial needs analysis, get to know him and, and ask him about his family. His wife passed away a few years ago. Great guy. And I says, he says, I want to retire at probably 62 to 65. 
And I'm like, well, how much do you need? He says, I'd like to be pulling in a few thousand dollars a month in, in, in retirement income. Great. I like what I'm hearing. Okay. How much have you saved? And he shows me his little fidelity statement. He's got 35 grand. So do the math, 35 grand. If I grow that at like 150% rate of return, which is impossible, it's not impossible, but highly improbable. And you saw what Kyle just showed you. I've got to have a chunk of money or a nest egg that's going to spin off 36,000 minimum dollars a year minus taxes. And he's starting with a balance under $40,000. So I love being debt-free, but I do know people that have just everything debt-free, debt-free, get out of debt, get out of debt, and then they're broke. And so what do they end up doing when they're in their 60s? There's a kind of a popular program out there that a lot of people are using. I'm not trashing it. They're reverse mortgage. So they spend their lives paying off this piece of real estate, and then they borrow against it so that they can survive. So if we can avoid some of that, great. I'd rather they had money and bought more real estate possibly, right? What's wrong with doing that? If they can generate income and do some smart things. Better yet, if they can access, access that money tax-free to do that, it's even better. And there are ways and places to do that. So reducing debt and increasing our savings simultaneously, cash flow, building wealth, and making sure that we protect you know, I, I remember when I started in the industry, a guy told me something, he says, hey, you need to remind people that when, before they pass away, they have a choice as to where their money goes, right? You can choose. The default is estate tax and some of those fun things that people get to pay, but you can choose to have money go to a charity, to go to your family, but you need to choose because if you don't choose, the government will choose for you. And so you want to have control over that choice. And so I think it's important. We do sort of a health checkup, a financial health checkup of all seven of these areas. And if one of these areas is kind of out of whack, it can have an effect on the other areas of their finance, right? And so too much debt, too much debt, too much debt, not enough money at the end of the month, hard to save, right? Can't do the kinds of things that you want some of your clients to be able to do. And I have a doctor client who makes $700,000 a year as an orthopedic surgeon, has some savings, doing all right, but he is totally fouled up, upside down, backwards and everything in his life financially. And I have another client who makes like $35,000 a year, and they would not trade place with that guy for a million bucks. You understand what I'm saying? Because they live below their means, they have no debt. They're very liquid, very happy and content. So it's not so much what you make, it's what you save, right? And what you do with it. And so we want to make sure that we educate people from all walks of life and do that. So we'll, we'll just keep moving here. And I think I have, this is you. <laughs> Back to you. Uh, so nobody's saving enough. If, if the question is, do I have enough? There's always an opportunity to have more in this world until the day we die. Um, but if we only had 152,000 ready for retirement, and we might only have three years to live on that if we want to live at a 50,000 a year income. Um, you know, millennials, the young 20 year olds, eh, there's a lot of time to grow that thing, right? But at the same time, the sooner you start growing it, the bigger that tree of wealth can become. That arm can be very big. The thing we don't want to have happen, no matter what, is try and take off in a plane that only has one wing. Doesn't work very well. It might work on a helicopter if that one arm spins fast enough. <laughs> no sense of adventure. Imagine, though, that you're on that airplane on the way to Hawaii and you look out the window and oh that there's a arm gone you'd be freaking out everybody on the plane would be freaking out like we're over the Pacific Ocean we're gonna die there are a lot of Americans a lot of people in the world that are kind of doing that with their own financial journey they're going oh you know I'm paying the social security we're independent contractors so we don't have that benefit maybe our spouse does um yeah social security is there um yeah it might be there we don't know um but if i only have like two hundred thousand dollars in a 401k those two combined that's only one arm 
But what about this other arm? There's nothing there, and that's not going to get us through 65 or the golden age of retirement to 85, 90. Hopefully, we're all living that long, right? Hopefully, we have grandkids. We have fun things we want to get done. I don't want that to happen. So there's this is an example of how that could work. Oh, we have enough. Oh, we don't have enough. I think we're gonna have you talk about this. So. Yeah, and so you know, there's this this question like, what's my number? Right? Everybody's like, well, how much do I need? How much do I really need to live comfortably and retire or have that work balance or maybe work six months out of the year and play the rest? What is it that I need to do? How much do I need? That question is the same for everybody, right? No, that's a, that's not a trick question. Either. It's not. It's because everybody's different. Everybody, yeah. And and what 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 do I want to do? Like, what is my primary aim? What's my chief aim? What are my goals? And so I can tell you right now, you know, provisional income tax and some of those things that can go up. Our taxes going up in the future, down, or staying the same? Who knows? We don't know, right? And your situation could be different. Well, self-employment tax will continue to go up. Okay. Would it be nice to not have to worry about that? Like taxes are just a speed bump in the road, potentially. So if we have our ladder leaning against the right building and we're planning the right way, that's a great conversation that we can have with someone to kind of open up their mind to doing some things that maybe they wouldn't do on their own. And so what happens is, what happens, we see insufficient income. By the way, what's the unemployment rate in Utah? It's like 2.1%. We're like the, one of the lowest in the nation, but you're, I, we could see, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, are we going to have a recession? I don't know. How deep will it be? How long could it be? You'll see people that are in their 60s and 70s potentially trying to re-enter or re-entering the workforce because they don't have enough savings required to get there. Um, I'll tell you, pensions are gone. Like my dad's pension was so good with the park service that, you know, he went and tried to get two other jobs and worked late and was paycheck to paycheck. So how many of you have a pension? I used to before I left public education and it's it's not any good anymore. It used to be, but it, it gets whittled away. People are living longer. It's hard to maintain all of that. People that are in retirement and pay current benefits and maintain a viable business. And so people are re-entering. Re so the next slide shows, hey, if we could have social security benefit gay if we have the right type of a qualified or non-qualified plan and it compounds we need savings that last as long as we do with the potential to leave a legacy and so we we call that sort of a rise strategy a recurring income a guaranteed income strategy which is out there it's like having a personal pension it's not necessarily the best thing for everyone but it's something that people ought to know about like hey how do i position an asset and have it give me guaranteed recurring income. Well, you guys are thinking, okay, real estate can do that if it's structured the right way. But you also can have liquid assets that can do the same thing. And so we want a reliable income that continues to go. So you want to, you're going to hit this one? Sure. Okay, we're almost done. <clears throat> Make sure we're not running out of time. We want to leave some time for questions. So there's that. So there's a few different plans. There's the tax now, the tax deferred, and the tax never. So when we put money in like the savings account, you know, we get a deal. There's there's tax that has to be paid now or within the next year. Present taxes. The tax later is like your 401k, your IRA, or Roth IRA. Well, Roth IRA you pay your taxes now. Then you you're paying on your seeds. So sorry, my brain went three different directions. If you're a farmer. Where would you rather pay your taxes? In the bags of seed. So I have 10 bags of seed. Fine, I'll pay my one bag of tax. Or one bag. In your, that farmer. Or three bags. Depending, yeah. Or do you want to put all of that labor, put all the seed in the ground, pray that it rains enough because we're in Utah. <laughs> You've had to pay for your equipment to get fixed. You're now using your equipment. You get this bumper crop. You're like, awesome. We paid for all of everything. And then have the government come say, okay, thank you. We'll take half of that from you. Oh, and we need a little bit more because you had an income off of that. No, we don't really want to have to do that. There are taxes we're going to have to pay in a given year. 
But the more money we can get in the tax never or tax free or tax later, better, right? So planning now and paying tax on $2 is better than paying tax on $2 million in the future, I think. The integrity. Um, so preserving retirement income can be a matter of life and death. Um, a couple of years ago, part of my whole life experience, um, I lost both my grandpas in the same year. And one of my grandpa's sister died a couple months later. So within a year, lost like three or four loved ones, grandparents. And that's tragic. So, it, so thinking of my grandma that's still alive, she's living off of a reverse, reverse mortgage and life's all right. But it's interesting to hear her conversations and how lonely she is and how it's been good for her. She's been able to realize how much effort she put into helping grandpa the last few years. And it's been cool in the personal aspects, knowing their relationship and some other things. But for some people, that loss and the loss of any retirement plan or pension plan can severely affect them emotionally, psychologically, and even cost them their life. Hopefully not be a suicide, but just it takes a toll on them physically at a time when they're not strong. Um, this one's an interesting quote. There's 54% chance you'll run out of money during a 30-year retirement if you withdraw 6% annual income from a 50-50 stock and bond investment. So if you just have your money in like Apple stocks and a mutual fund split 50-50, there's a pretty good chance that you're just gambling your future. And that, that's not very fun. Um, so it's time for you to answer your big question. Oh, we talked about this. Do you want to go in depth a little bit more on this? We can. I mean, this is just sort of a, a kind of an interesting strategy that I already alluded to just to kind of wrap up. You know, people can take, you know, a lot of people accumulate dollars in different different locations. Part of what we look at is say, hey, where can we take funds and get, a, get an upside potential? But then how do we avoid downside market risk? And especially downside risk would include unnecessary taxes, market loss. Or but 2020s or 2001s or 2008s when correct the world decided to correct things. So when we were out of this group, did all these studies, they, they went actually went, they backdated a 60-40 split. That looks like we're losing some people. No, that's, that's no, that's okay. Do we have you? We, we do want to give you a book. Would you like one? Come on up and grab one. Did you write your information in here? Give us a call. Let's visit. I wrote my number in there. Thank Let's you. Just, I want to make sure it's one rest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Information in this one too. Yeah. Okay. So just reach out to Kyle and we'll get an actual. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just to wrap ups. They show that if you took more, literally, if you took more than 4% out of your retirement account the last 10 years, well, this was done a few years ago after 9 11, between 9 11 and 2008, we call that the lost decade. You, you you ran out of money. So they said, they how do we adjust that? Well, first of all, you have to manage the money better so that you're not taking withdrawals and losing 10, 15%. Because you can imagine you lost 10, 15% in the market, took out five or six, and you need a certain amount of money to live on. Well, that now becomes a larger percentage of what's left over, right? And you we, we're seeing people wiping out re entire retirement accounts in a matter of just a few years. And so it's pretty scary. And so there's been a lot of competition with companies like Prudential, Jackson National, Nationwide. Like, how do we avoid that? And so we call it a rise static strategy or a retire re reliable income strategy that where we can actually get five, six percent growth, a five or six percent distribution, and never run out of money because they're, you're transferring risk to that company and they guarantee the income. And so there's some, again, for a, maybe a part of someone's portfolio that you can do that. And so we're, we're doing that with my 80-year-old clients we were talking about where they're going to avoid capital gains by using a grantor trust. 
sell that property. And we're going to put that, put a few hundred thousand dollars in a program that actually gives a nice credit going in. We'll pay a credit every year. And he says, well, we don't really need the money right now, but we will. And so then we'll turn on a guaranteed income stream from that bucket of money. They don't lose the bucket of money in exchange for income though, right? So, so you understand that. That is a very, very cool concept. And so whether they're questioning whether we want to move this hard asset, move this real estate, now they're not so much worried about it because one, they can avoid the capital gains. I mean, nobody wants to pay $120,000, do they, in taxes? But that's sort of the nature of things. So we're going to use this type of a program for them and avoid market loss and avoid downside risk. And so that's just a fun conversation to have with people and be able to help them with something like that. Yeah. It, that ends the slideshow. But as you think about this question, will you have enough? We'd love to schedule a time with you. We'll give you a book today with our information in it so we can one-on-one -on -one look at where you are and if you if you want to move from there with whatever great if not there's no pressure other than we don't hand these out like they're candy because they're a little bit more than candy um but we want to be of service um that's what presidio is about that's what i'm about that's what patrick's about we want to serve you we want to serve our client we want to have people fly through retirement with two weeks and be able to make it all the way to hawaii and enjoy paradise um, to be able to enjoy their time with their grandkids, doing their genealogy or gardening or whatever that looks like. Um, so as we, as I wrap this up, what questions do you guys have? Corey? I have a really random question, and it's kind of a weird one. And so I saw a graph from there. Sorry, it's going to be super weird. So, but, but um, sorry, sorry right, there's, right, a, there's right. a graph that's like, you know, with how much money you're going to have, are you going to have enough? And you talk about legacy, right? So this is a conversation my wife and I have, have all the time, and we actually differ on it. So I wanted to kind of get your take on it. Um, as I talk to my parents, so my parents are, my mom's just barely retired, and she has enough to retire, and she, she wants to leave a little bit for her kids. I'm like, Mom, I would rather that you use, that you spent that money and that you had fun with it. And if you want to spend money, go on trip, let's come with you, and we'll do whatever, then that's that's fine. But we, I don't expect you to have, I don't need a legacy. I want you to, to enjoy your money now, and, and, and when I, my wife's parents, on the other hand, have no, there's no legacy money, right? And But we've also told them, like, we don't want it. We want, again, spend your money, use your money. It's your money, enjoy it. So as we talk to our kids, we have four daughters, um, and, and they're older. Our youngest is 17, our oldest is 22. I said, what do you want? Like, as we kind of think about our retirement, when we're dead, do you want to, us to leave some sort of legacy? Or would you rather that we didn't? And they all said, we don't want you to leave a legacy or we want to spend the time with you and enjoy the time with you and the money with you while you have it. So, and I, I actually have a little bit different, different opinion than that. I actually said, I want to, I want to do both. I want to leave a little bit of legacy for my kids, but I want to enjoy it with my kids as well. And so I'm curious, as you sit down with people, do you, do they, do you, you talk legacy, do, you, do more people have the preference of leaving a legacy or do they, you know what, I would, I think there's a shift in that a little bit, right? In the minds, I think back in the day, Older people wanted to leave something for their kids. And I think there's a shift as far as like people maybe our age or younger don't care as much to leave something for their kids because they just want to experience what their kids. Yeah. That makes sense. So that did you understand my question? It's Absolutely. Not not to a, not a first of all. Oh, one sentence question. Right. Right. So they say, yeah. leave a legacy or not because there's some life experience that tells you well, spend it with your family. Yeah. Legacy to and do more people do more people care about the legacy or not? Do a really quick answer that through a question and answer session that we do and kind of the get to know you visits. I kind of let them bring that up, but you'd be surprised because you're very typical of most couples that I meet with. It's very split. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, back to the airplane analogy, you know, if the plane's going down and you lose oxygen, you put your own mask on first, then you help your kid or the person next to you. And so when I meet, if I were to meet with anyone, it's like, okay, let's make sure that mom and dad or the single mom or dad or whatever the case might be, let's make sure that you're on track. Let's have you live comfortably. Let's spend those assets as needed. Let's get, the, get that situated. And then by the way, if there's something left over, what are your thoughts about it? Oh, well, our, our kids, if there's anything left over, we'll let them, we'll let them split that. 
But I've set up family limited partnerships where dollars have gone over because dad wants to take kids to a condo. They go golf in St. George and they have money and assets and they do those kinds of things. And they've done some planning. And the wife's like, I don't even care. As long as I'm good and you're good, if there's money left over, great. But the nice thing about it, the right type of a plan can be spent down tax-free. If there's something left over, great. You can give it to BYU or University of Utah or whoever you want to give it to. Yeah, well, or you can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can give it to your kids. Um, you know, but here's the other thing. I had a client 15 years ago, now has a grandchild that has, she had cerebral palsy and she's having some struggles. She's lived a lot longer than they thought. And so they're concerned about their kids who are spending a lot of time and energy and resources to take care of her. And that, that question changes. Well, some things that they've done can be set up with the trust to flow dollars to her for long-term care if she needs it. So they're concerned, not only for the grandchild, but for the mom and the dad who, I don't, I don't know what that would be like to have a child that has cerebral palsy and have to you know, take care of a child like that. We're, we're just grateful that our kids are healthy. But, there, but that legacy planning sometimes involves a special needs child or maybe a divorce that takes place late in life. So we want to keep options open with those assets so, so that we can do things. It's time for a divorce. So I'm just, yeah. yeah, but things happen, right? Mixed families are different, okay. right? Just add something to the like, when you were talking about the legacies. Yeah. So like for me and my husband, I know like it's like a personal decision for everybody. But like when you, you guys call it like leaving a legacy, but it's just like money, right? And so like for me and my husband, we want to leave like something that's going to like withstand, you know, it's like money, you could spend it and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. But like building like a business where your kids don't even have to take, take over it, you know, but mm -hmm. it gets carried into their Yes, and you legacy have planning is more than just leaving a pile of cash at the end. It's actual estate and trust and real planning that has a structure, some concepts in place. There's an understanding that that can be generational. Right. Yeah. So it's not just, yes. here's a million dollars and it seems like a lot, but you go through it. So you put a 25 year old kid, 400 grand without a plan and see what happens. I had a good grandma yeah, who had stuff. They decided to sell the business as part of the estate when she passed. And there was some money that got sent to my my parents and my other aunts and uncles, and you know, we got a house and they bought cars. Anyway, um, what's another question that somebody has? I do like Corey's question. It's a great question, Corey. Because we have a question online. Okay. Hi. Um, the we have I'm some probably. people wondering um, if they can get uh, the book. If there's yes. any way the online people. Let me. Um, my information's on there, but you can also email. Text, text Kyle. We can mail you a book. We're happy to do that at our, at our expense. Online that want to pick them up. If you promise to give me a call. I can leave a couple of books up. We'd like to discuss some concepts about it with you and see, you know, how we can, yeah. we, we want to see if how we can help you make more money and help your clients. Let's not kid ourselves. We, if we can increase your business and help you kind of network with some other people and kind of increase your clientele, wonderful. If you have a question about something great, we don't charge consultation fees. So we're easy to get rid of. My schedule is still open. So just know that. And Patrick's good at working with me financial advisors retirement yeah. like yeah financial advisors is the main we're licensed for bonded insured financial professionals and we work with multiple companies doing financial planning we're not a bank i don't do mortgages i just do family and small business financial planning what was the umbrella yeah. we're, we're part of the trans american financial advisors brokerage but we market and work through how money works and wealth wave they're a huge company that has a lot of different things in a lot of different places. So we work with Fidelity. We work with all of the brokers. We work with Schwab as well. And we do a lot of that type of accounting as well. So Sunday, I'm, just, I'm watching golf. I'm seeing all of these different yeah. companies that market. Yeah. 
they're misunderstood. They can be used well. Annuities. They can be used well and structured properly, and they can also get people into trouble. There's there's a great misconception about it's like what's your thought about mutual funds? There's some really awesome funds, and there's some garbage ones out there. There's some great annuities of structured and understood correctly, and there are some that you would want to avoid. So that's kind of a, all an annuity is is a is a savings or an investment plan with a life insurance company. That's all it is. But there's penalties. On some and some there are not penalties. Oh, really? so, correct. I had a client and her financial advisor uh, encouraged her to put all of her money after she sold her Mapleton home into an annuity. Mm -hmm. And then she wanted to buy a home. And in order to take out that money, they were going to charge her twenty thousand dollars because she wanted to take out her own money. Yeah, and that, that advisor should have had more of a, an open conversation with that individual about what's the purpose, what are we going to do, how liquid does it need to be, what are your plans, and, it, and, and you would never do that. By the way, from a fiduciary standpoint, there's a 50% threshold on that. So if someone says, I have $100,000 to my name, I really want to use an annuity, no more than 50 grand could go into that plan. But now we have to decide what's the why are we using that plan and what's that's no more than 50. No, that's kind of a rule. That's sort of a rule out there. But if I'm putting money in any particular plan, why am I doing it? What's the purpose? Access income, those are things that we would review with that individual. And um, yeah, someone says, Hey, this money's gonna be in my account for six months. We're gonna say leave it in the bank. If things change, let us know, but we can park some liquid dollars and have those things be out in 24 to 48 hours without penalties. So how long do they have to, have, does that have to be? Well, some of those are four years, seven years. Some of them are 10. Depends on the state. Utah law, no more than a 10-year surrender on any annuity. That's a state law for Utah. If, if that perch was purchased here with someone in Utah. Yeah. And there's some really ugly plans out there. But there's ways to creatively work through things and get out of those without causing a lot of headaches. So if you wanted to visit about that, you certainly could contact us. It's 11 o'clock. Yeah. So I'm going to say we're done because it's 11. Thank you for your time. But thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I do have a number of books. I don't have enough for everyone in the room or online. Feel free to email me. I will get you a copy. We'll meet and talk about your situation individually. Okay. But thank you so much, and have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Yeah.